Smith & Wesson FPC carbine. Let's check it out. Smith & Wesson has been in business since 1852, and they have produced a great line of revolvers going into semi-automatics. Of course, they have rifles. They've even produced shotguns. It's an icon in the firearm world. But one of the things that's really surprised me over the past year is some of the innovation that's really come from Smith & Wesson, starting out with their MMP 2.0 metal, uh, definitely a departure from the polymer frame. And then they came out with the Equalizer, which is a upgrade to the EZ series, which really gives an option to our most vulnerable, and yet it's just a great shooting handgun. And then they surprised me with the Smith & Wesson 5.7. But nothing has surprised me more than the new FPC carbine. Uh, this is a small, very modular, 9mm carbine. has a lot of cool features about it, but one of the biggest is this. <laughs> it just breaks down into a very small package. A very reminiscent of the kel Sub-2000. And we'll do a little comparison between the two. But this comes in with the Smith & Wesson quality. And it makes it a very compact option, and yet it can fold out to a full-size carbine. Uses the standard MMP 2.0 mags, and it has a mag carrier in the stock with extended mags. Uh, there's just a lot of cool things about this. And so we're going to check it out, and we really appreciate Smith & Wesson for providing the FPC for this review and letting you guys see the new kit on the block. Guys, again, this shocked me. And I'll tell you, this is such a small package. It's 16 and a quarter inches in length when it's folded down makes a great, just small truck gun, hiking, camping, fishing, whatever you're doing, bug out gun. Uh, it steps across the line from a pistol with that pistol caliber, and yet it gives you more capability because you have more barrel length. You can put optics on it, extra magazines. There's just a lot of things that this really upgrades your capability. Now, of course, in the compact size, it's great. And then just pull back just a touch on the charging handle, which you don't really have to do, but it saves your handle from getting damaged. And then we open it up, and now we have a full carbine. Definitely reminiscent of your Sub-2000 from kel -Tec. We are going to be taking a look at that as well. So let's go ahead and remove our magazine. We have a 17 plus 1 magazine. Check the chamber, and it's empty. Now it does come with two additional magazines, and they fit right in the back of the buttstock. These are 23 round magazines and they come with the gun. You've already got a number of magazines to start out with and I'm sure that there will be others to follow. So when you put in your extended magazine, it just hangs off a little bit from the bottom, but that's what they all do when you have those extended mags. And it has a small little base plate right here uh, and then keeps it from over inserting. But these are standard MMP 2.0 magazines. And if you look at the grip, I mean, this is an MMP grip. And so if you have an MMP, this is a no-brainer. I mean, it goes straight to just that same ergonomics, the magazine release, pretty much the same as your MMP. It jets those out. Trigger with the trigger safety, but there is a cross bolt safety right here. And it's right there above the trigger guard. Really easy to get a hold of as far as just depressing. But again, because this does have your trigger safety, it gives you a little more security. Right here is the latch, and you pull it forward, and then the barrel just bends. And then right here is your charging handle. And you can actually collapse this like that, but I recommend pulling that charging handle back just a touch, and you can just relieve that pressure, and then it allows it to fit. 
the handguard is polymer and it is M-lock compatible. So, you know, you're going to want to really protect that with this polymer charging handle, which is ambidextrous. But Smith & Wesson recommends the drawback on the charging handle to deploy. And then locks it up, and then when you hear that click, you're ready to go. And with the charging handle, you can pull from one side or you can pull from both. And this really makes it nice because it's according to how I want to charge the weapon. I can either do it from my weak hand or I can come in with my standard hand and just charge this or just come across the top. So it gives you some options. Now, I will say that when I first got this, this was really stiff. I put a little bit of lubrication on it, and man, it just made it a lot more smooth. So very easy to pull back. Of course, this is a blowback action, so it's going to be a little stiff magazine, but really easy. And you do have last round bolt hold open. Now, your slide stop levers are minimal, very similar to the pistol, but you do have this casing that's over it. So it's really a little difficult to get to. They are ambidextrous, and you can do it. Uh, but really most of us just charge, pull back on the charging handle when we have an empty magazine and we can load the firearm. But this is one thing with that really small slide stop, it's a little bit difficult to get to. The stock is a solid piece of polymer, you drop your magazines in. Uh, one thing that I will mention is that this is not uh, adjustable, it's in a fixed position. Uh, you do have your latches here, but what this does, it releases the magazines. And so you can just do that, pop them in, and they're locked in. Uh, but one thing you'll notice is, is here there's an ambi lock, but it's not really ambi. When I press this side, it releases this magazine. Otherwise, it stays in. When I press this button, it releases this magazine. So just according to the other side. And to remove the stock, this also comes into play, and we'll talk about that when we disassemble it. And it does have a QD port right here at the back of the stock. And it has some texturing here on the back, but it does give you a nice cheek weld. And even with the magazines inserted, you can still pull that charging handle back really easily. Again, the grip module is polymer and this whole upper receiver section. And it does have a shell deflector that comes out. So if you're shooting this left-handed, I mean, it's going to eject those shells out by the side. Uh, again, here is your lever and it just pulls out. Here we have a Picatinny rail all along the top. This is polymer and we have M-lock rails all the way down. And it's half by 28 threads for suppressors or muzzle brakes. Nice slant at the front. Now the buffer tube in the back, very similar to your AR-15 where the bolt and the spring rest in here when you're firing. And model number and serial numbers are right here on the buffer tube. Now the FPC carbine idea is not something new. Obviously we have the kel Sub-2000. Uh, these have been around for a long time. Uh, and then we have a new kit on the block and this is the Trailblazer Firearms Pivot. Now this is an all aluminum carbine. Uh, this is very unique in itself. I did a review on this, so I have it annotated above. But this is really a very well-made firearm. But the kel I love it. I love the Sub-2000. Uh, I've done a lot of shooting with this one in particular. But one of the big problems with kel is that the linkages for the trigger are polymer. And after a while, and I've seen this over and over, and this one is included, it stops resetting. Uh, your trigger reset stops because the linkages just aren't working. So uh, there are some solutions. Uh, the M-Carbo solution is one of the best. If you have one that you're having some issues with, that is a good fix for that. And so that's one of the things I love about the Smith & Wesson is because it is the M&P proven design. So we're going to get good reliability with this gun. Uh, with the Trailblazer Firearms, it's coming in at a more expensive price, but it does have a lot of really incredible quality with this gun. And so I've been very impressed with this one, but this is more expensive. So I feel like that the M&P FPC is really hitting that sweet spot for reliability, quality, and it has Smith & Wesson name behind it. Just push at the top, this comes around and it folds into this type package. This is awesome. <laughs> I love this gun. With the Sub 2000, grab hold of the trigger guard, pull it, and then it folds down into a really cool package. And again with the FPC, just bring it around and it snaps down. I love when we have options. Weight on the FPC. Five pounds, 3.6 ounces. Now included is a really discreet case. I mean, there is no markings at all on here. You have a nice 
grab handle, double. We have D rings, and there is a strap inside. And so we got double zippers. Bring this open, and here we go. We got the FPC. We have nice backing here. This Velcro, uh, and of course we can open this up, and the straps hold it together. Uh, these are removable or movable, however you want to do it, and uh, it really makes it very secure. Here on the other side, you have a number of different pockets. And uh, the magazines all came in this pocket. Here we have our owner's manual, the lock, different uh, documents. In this compartment, we have our grip modules. And then here at the top, we have a strap. And of course, you can put all different accessories in here. But that way you can carry this, and we have a chamber flag. But guys, if you're traveling, I mean, you can carry this pack in there. Nobody really knows what it is. You can pack this in your car. I mean, this makes a great option. Really great that Smith & Wesson included this. Just like the MMP 2.0, you get additional back straps, and there are three extra options. Uh, one thing I do love about the Smith & Wesson series is right here you have a small little tool. You can just turn it and pull it straight out like that, and yet the grip comes right off. So I can switch this with any grip that I choose. Gives me a little more palm swell with this one. Return your tool, put it in, and now I've got a different option. That is a really easy way to change these out. Let's check the trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge of Brownells. Four pounds, 4.7 ounces. Four pounds, 5.8 ounces. So according to where you put it on the trigger, it's lighter if you put it at the lower end, it's heavier this way, and that has to do with the fulcrum of the trigger. Now the FPC does not come with sights. Uh, you can put backup sights, red dot, reflex sight, whatever you want to. So here we installed one of the Trigicon RMOs, uh, but guys, the sky's the limit when it comes to red dots that go well on the FPC. Big thanks to Fiocchi for sponsoring the ammunition, all made in the USA, one of the biggest suppliers of ammunition in the country. And we're gonna shoot some, just some 115 grain ball, but Tell you what, these magazines, it's just great to have the extras. And of course, Lula Loaders makes it easy to load. And we really appreciate Mag Lula for helping us out. FPC, I mean, the big thing about this is, is the foldability. Just makes it so simple to be able to close that, lock it down, uh, and then when you want to deploy it, you can just pull it out and you're ready to fire. Of course, just rack your slide, very easy, ambidextrous, it's ready to go. We've had no malfunctions whatsoever, and uh, it just makes it just a joy to shoot. Of course, this is a blowback action so it's got a little bit of recoil you can feel that bolt coming back but it's very manageable i'll tell you guys i mean there's a lot of cool features about this rifle it fits good on your shoulder it doesn't seem like a skeletonized kind of half thought out the stock while it's a little bit larger it gives you a nice cheek weld to be able to bring it up and uh, i don't know i just i think it's just a great option especially if you're survival minded but definitely, I mean, it's just one of those guns if you're looking for something that's very compact. It just makes a great option. And it just keeps on running. Now for disassembly. Now we're gonna go ahead and drop our magazine. We're gonna go ahead and bring the barrel around into the lock position. Uh, check our chamber and we're empty. Also, we wanna remove our magazines from the back. Now first you wanna remove the stock. We have to pull down on the magazine release pins, but this is also the stock retainer pin. Now you're gonna to wanna to press down on the barrel in a vertical position, pull out on your stock push down and it allows the buffer tube to come out of the stock. Uh, this is a little tough on your fingers at first, but once you get a hold of it and press down, it relieves the pressure on that pin. Now here at the end of your buffer tube, you have a small cap. You need to depress it and that allows for the pin to come through. 
So turn it over and it just pulls through like that. Be very careful with the cap, it is under spring tension. Now go ahead and slide your charging handle back and you'll notice that the bolt will come out and extend. Once you get the charging handle fully extended, pull it back until it reveals this little pin right here. Now on the other side, there is a hole and you wanna see it right here in the buffer tube and you wanna just pull that until it lines up with the buffer tube hole and then your pin will fall right out. Now we're gonna just pull out the bolt and we have two pieces and it only goes one way, but it's underneath, it comes up and it connects. Here we have our bolt face and you just have this really large weight that just helps mitigate the recoil. Of course you have your extractor and um, I mean, it's just a very simple system, but it's definitely very beefy. Next, bring your charging handle to the rear and then just pull up. And guys, that's all you need to do to field strip the firearm. With your barrel, just open up and you can clean from the back side. Reassembly is in reverse order. You wanna make sure you put your charging handle on first. Go ahead and bring it into place. Uh, then we're gonna take our bolt. Again, it only goes in one way. As we're bringing our bolt down, make sure you get that circle right into place, and then you take your pin, fat end first, goes right down in there. And then we're gonna push this on forward. Now once it gets to a certain place, it's gonna stop. And so Smith & Wesson recommends taking a wooden dowel or a non-marring type punch, and we're gonna pop this down. Just tap it, it'll start to go down. And you wanna make sure that the bolt is fully seated. Next, drop in your recoil spring. Take your plug, make sure that the hole in the plug is facing in the right direction. Put it on your spring and just line it up. Once you get that hole lined up, take your pin and just drop it in. It takes a little bit of finagling to make sure you're getting it on the other side correctly. There we go. And that's gonna be your retainer pin. Put the carbine on a flat surface and press down. You'll notice that the pin comes out. You wanna go ahead and bring that all the way out and then lock it into place. And this pin will not be extended out, it'll be in this position when it's locked. Return your magazine, test for function. As far as the price, uh, I don't have MSRP at this point. Got this before the launch, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, but typically with Smith & Wesson, they do bring it into a reasonable price. But the foldability of the carbine really sets this apart. Uh, similar to the Sub 2000 by kel uh, I think you've got a more reliable trigger system, and I think that's big. Then we have the Trailblazer Firearms, which is excellent. The pivot is just a great gun, but uh, definitely the price is up there. But it is all metal construction and just an excellent firearm. The M-Lock rail, the Picatinny on top, threaded barrel, MMP design all the way throughout, which is proven. Uh, and then we have the extra magazines, the 23 round magazines and your 17 round. I mean, it gives you some capability and being able to stow it in the stock is a pretty cool option. Breakdown's fairly easy and not a bad trigger pull on this gun. Uh, and of course you can put any kind of optics or lights or lasers on this firearm. Uh, and then again, you know, being able to break this down really simply just by pushing forward, locking it into place. I mean, it just makes a very compact option for bug out bag, survival, truck gun, camping, hiking, whatever, wherever you need a really small firearm that's capable. Uh, this takes it to another level over a handgun because you have a much longer sight radius, you have optics, you have that longer barrel, threaded barrel, just really cool foldability of the firearm, which is really one of the best things about this, obviously. I mean, that's what really makes this different. It just compacts into a great size, great for a truck gun, great for boats, great just for small spaces. And then when you need it, I mean, it just makes it really easy just to pop out and you're ready to deploy. And it gives us just another option of a very compact type carbine size. And again, we really appreciate Smith & Wesson for providing the FPC carbine for this review and guys giving you a sneak peek. And honestly, when I opened the box, I was blown away. Took it to the range, I wasn't disappointed. Be strong, be of good courage.
God bless America. Long live the Republic. See the bolt coming through. It does have an enlarged block for. It does have a nice. It does have a deflection port for, and it does have. De uh, with the Keltec Sub 2000, pull down on the trigger group. Okay. With the Keltec Sub 2000, we pull on the trigger. How? Okay. Here we have our okay. this grip. Okay, this grip. In this grip, we have a grip. This is a grip. And then once I get it fit in, I just return the tool that I can use. We have to do a little finagling, but there it goes. <laughs> oh my gosh! Always something. I do this so you don't have to figure all this out. We're good to go. I mean, this thing is just, just awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> I'm so excited. Jeez, man.